Welcome to QTP Learning Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will see about object repository and what and all operations we can do on object repository. So before you create a test, you need to set up the resources that will be used by your test script. So uh, object repository is the core of your execution, core of uh, a QTP script, which accomplish your uh, business flows. So a uh, object repository is a storehouse for the test objects used in your script. For example, it's a collection of uh, object repository is a collection of all the objects uh, uh, which helps QTP to identify the uh, objects in the screen during recording and replay. So during recording, QTP will learn the object's presence in the screen. For example, if you are clicking on a button OK, QTP will gather information of the button OK and then it will store in the format of .tsr, test script repository. So that is called object repository. It's a collection of all the objects, what and all the things you do in the screen during recording. And while replay, it will match the properties and methods and then it will do the action on the screen. If there is any conflict between the recorded properties and the replay properties, then QTP will fail if there is any conflicts. For example, instead of OK, if there is a, a button called Submit, then QTP will not identify that as a OK. So it will identify as a Submit, so it will not do any action on that button. So each object is a part of a test object hierarchy. For example, a link object may be a part of browser or a page. For example, uh, for a button object, it may be a, a parent of dialog box. It may be a parent of frames. So top level objects such as browser objects are known as container objects. They contains lower level objects such as frames or page objects. So there are two kinds of repositories in QTP. One is shared one and another one is local. Shared object repository contains the objects that can be used across your actions. For example, if you are creating a repository, we have a username, password, OK, cancel. So these four objects we can use it across all the actions. So if you created, converted the local object repository to shared one, then QTP can use all the objects across the actions. But if you create a local one, you cannot reuse the objects during replay. So now we will see a short demo on how to create objects and what are the operations we can do in the objects in QTP. So I'm going to record a simple flow so again a, a flight application so I'm entering my username and password click on ok ok how I'm going to stop my recording here so here you could see I have done three actions right I entered my username I entered password I clicked on OK. To view the object captured by QTP, you need to click on this object repository icon or simply press Ctrl plus or shortcut key. So here you could see the action under action 1, I have one dialog box called login and I have three objects. OK is a button and agent name is the user input text box and password is the secure text box so if you click on ok in the right side you could see the properties and its value so by default for a button qtp will consider these two properties text and native class but for text box considers native class and attached test. For different objects, QTP will display different details. If you would like to see more details about a particular object, then you have to click on this plus button. 
add description properties. Just expand it, you could see the properties here, but all are blank now. Similarly, if you want to delete any properties, you can just simply click on delete. And also, you can change the name of your object, only the logical name, because in one frame, you can have n number of OK buttons. So how to identify which OK button is for what? So to understand, to understand uh, engineers should understand what object is for what, so that you can rename it easily. So just click on the object and right click rename. So login underscore OK. Similarly, user. So likewise, you can edit, you can rename the object names. This will not affect all your object identification. Okay. Now, I would like to add some more objects. Apart from these three, I want to add more objects to my script, to my object repository. So how do I add? So here there is an icon called add objects to local plus icon with the rectangle cube box. Let's click on it. So you, here it will turn into your hand symbol. In recording you will not be able to see, but it will actually it will turn into a hand symbol. So just click on the window you would like to add or just click on the object you want to add. So in this case I am going to click on this flight button. I am going to add the flight button. So just select this and click on OK. So to verify, to identify which button is for what. So we have an object spy here. So object spy it will help you to highlight the object. So engineers uh, during scripting, uh, during framework design, they have to highlight the object so that they can identify the right object. So just click on object spy, which helps you to learn the objects. So just uh, click on object spy and just click on the uh, objects so that you can uh, learn the particular objects. So this will uh, highlight and it helps you to learn the properties and methods. And also there is one more feature called highlight in application. So highlight in application helps you to highlight. So this is my window. This is my flight. But if I click on password, it will not highlight because I don't invoke the, uh, uh, the login screen is not active now. I have only the after login screen only, flight window only I have uh, open. I mean, uh, I logged in already, right? So if you want to highlight this particular object, you want to invoke the login screen. So like this, you can add n number of objects to your script. So I want to add all the objects in the screen. So how do I do? I want all the objects. So just click on the window click on OK and select all object types. So all object types to select, it will add all the objects in the particular window. So here we have more than 20 plus objects in the flight reservation window. But I want to add only the specific kind of uh, uh, objects such as I want to select only uh, the images. So I want only the links, I want only the buttons, I don't want anything extra. So just to check this particular object types you want to learn and click on OK. And again click on OK. This will add only the respective type of objects. So to save your object repository, go to File, Export Local Objects and give a name, Save Flights underscore object repository click on ok click on save so now you'll be able to see your object repository here okay now you want to edit 
I want to edit some of the objects because some of the properties has changed for the uh, uh, new release. So how do I edit the objects? So for this, you have object repository manager. So go to resources and select object repository manager and click on open and select your object repository to edit and click on open button. So here you could see it's been uh, disabled, right? It, it consider, uh, so, uh, the opacity is very uh, less here. So to edit, you need to enable the editing mode. So how do I enable? So just click on enable editing button, right? So now you will be able to edit any stuff here. So I'm going to edit here. So airline underscore flights, and then click on save. So this is how you will you edit the object repository. So in this tutorial, we have seen what is object repository, how to add, and what is object spy, how to rename the objects, how to add the objects, how to align the objects, etc. In next tutorial, we will see uh, how to merge object repositories and how to map repository parameters in detail and how to associate uh, repositories. Thank you.